KU fan. We got another one coming in right now. Hey, caller, welcome to the show. How you doing? JG, what is happening? What up? It's Auburn alumni. It is indeed. It is indeed. How are you, sir? Good, man. I appreciate you uh, being with us all day today. No problem. Have you uh, have you grown tired of talking to us jabronis after three straight days of this? Shoot, hell no, man. Appreciate it. I'm, after uh, the the beating I took on a bunker for just having this show, I'm just glad to keep, <laughs> glad to keep it going, man. Yeah, I mean, like I said, who who would want real time responses from you know the staff and real time? Like obviously, it's like oh, it's tank plane, and we're getting you know on the field calls, and you as you call in to Christian and get updates obviously we don't want that nowadays because you know we don't like instant gratification in our society or i don't know I, I don't understand it so i just felt like it was a new way to kind of connect but uh you know some people don't like it i don't know man you got well you got 200 people right now watching this right now and then who knows how many people watch the replay i would i wouldn't even sweat it you guys that's, that's what be mad and that's what the whole staff is for and y'all put out great stuff and this is the wave of the future and uh, I don't see you need to change this anytime soon, but I'm but I'm biased. So. Sure, me too. <laughs> hey, tell me about that. Uh, I've been reading your thoughts all game, so I got a pretty good idea where you're coming from on this one. But just kind of wrap it up for us. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not even I'm not even remotely angry right now. Like seriously, like this this went exactly like I thought it would. Um, so does that mean I'm now? Here's the thing, though. Cause you're gonna have you got the, the the quote unquote the doom and gloom. You're 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 accepting mediocrity. No, no, no. I'm just. I knew it was coming. I mean, we all pretty much knew it was coming. Uh, that being said, I'll just echo what I said in, in the chat. Uh, just because this happens every other year doesn't mean it's acceptable. Um, just because we knew it was coming doesn't mean it's acceptable. Uh, this is this is literally a carbon copy of two years ago in Tuscaloosa and the two years before that. And I think the two years before that, I think that's 14 was the last time we actually put up any real fight. Uh, but – you know, the difference being, you know, we talk about, and, and this is, you know, allow me to wax poetic just a little bit, but, uh, you know, the, the, the bigger discussion that we always circle back to with Gus, <clears throat> and yes, overall, he's had more success against Nick than anybody has, uh, but this is pretty much the standard Auburn performance, not just in Tuscaloosa, but when we go to Athens and we go to Baton Rouge. Now, I think we're actually a little bit better in Baton Rouge than we are even against Athens and Tuscaloosa, but, you know, the the song remains the same in that, you know, you, you've got consistently us getting our doors blown off on the road. And if you are going into these homes for these big-time kids and you're wanting to grab those kids, uh, you cannot – have performances like this constantly every year you can't get the Amerius Amerius Mims of the world no. when they watch you get booty blasted in Baton Rouge Athens Tuscaloosa every other year every time you're in these and that's the biggest issue uh he'll get and, and obviously now it's even more so um you know with Athens with 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 Georgia for example we, we used to beat them in Auburn and now we can't get that done but that's my issue, and that's where, you know, you talked about kind of the level that you're at. This is where we're at. I mean, this is where we've been. And I don't see a magic bullet next year. I don't see suddenly the offensive line being much different than it is this year. I think Bo's going to be good. Um, I think, obviously, we I think we got really good running backs, not just Tank. Tank's a beast, and Tank's special. But I think everybody behind him, I think we got a good group there. But we're just a, a run below where we need to be to really be at that level where we can go into a game in Tuscaloosa or Baton Rouge and have a real feeling that we got a chance. Nobody had a feeling that we had a chance going into this game. I know. Nobody. I didn't either. I didn't either. You can't, you can't be like that in year eight. You just can't. And that's my big issue right now. And that's my issue with the program. Uh, it's, I have an issue that I'm not upset getting law, getting waxed by 30 to Alabama. That should not happen. I can't remember a single time with Coach Dow, me being an old and me growing up in the 80s, I can't remember any Iron Bowl where we just got absolutely wrecked by Alabama by 30 points. Um, I'm having a hard time even remembering that. And I have a hard time outside of one particular game where my dad took me to see us play FSU in the mid-80s and we got drilled like we did today, but that was a rare occurrence under Coach Dye. And that's the kind of program that I think all Auburn fans want because we want 
that program where every game we go in, we've got a fighting chance. And we know for a fact we're, we're definitely not going to get just destroyed. Uh, and here it's a pretty much a given, and we've reached that point. That's why everybody's just kind of like, ah, oh, well, it's another game. Uh, you know, I still think we got a chance next week. And obviously I think we got – somehow, because Gus is here next year, somehow the game next year will be in close and all. But by that same token, if Gus is here in two years, I fully expect for this to be the exact same thing that will happen then. No matter who's on the roster, no matter what, this seems to be a recurring thing. That's that's my issue. That's my issue with the program right now. Yeah, I was looking at uh, Coach Die. The worst loss he took really was his last one, 0-17. I mean, he lost 17-0 to in 92. And that's still not as bad yeah. as what happened today, you know? No, and it was a 0-0 game at half. And the game, the thing I remember about the game was James Willis knocking David Palmer off the television screen uh, in that game. <laughs> that's one thing I remember from that. Uh, but but that's the issue. And, you know, I've said this before on the drain. I've said it on the message boards. I've said that it's time, it's past time. And, you know, everybody's like, well, who are we going to get? I, I don't know. You know, the thing about it is everybody's, you know, shoe-in guy in the, on the board has a wart. I mean – you know, uh, Crystal Ball lost last night to a Beaver team, and I think they were down like 20 points and came back to beat Oregon. Uh, obviously, Franklin's uh, now he's uh, one in five. Um, you know, every, you, you can name off any coaching candidate, and everybody's got a award. Um, do I think they can do better than Gus? I don't know, but here's the, here's the difference. I know where Gus is at, and I know where Gus's ceiling is, and I think this is pretty much the ceiling. I mean, we had our opportunity 13. 13, you had Auburn go to two national titles in four years. That was our window to really reach that elite, in my opinion. Uh, you had so much to sell recruits. You're like, hey, we went to the championship in 10, won it. We went to the championship in 13, almost won it. We're on, you know, we're on the rise. Now, again, going for those big-time kids, you got to have to stay in the top level. What do we have to really sell them on? Well, we can beat Alabama and Auburn, but other than that, there's not a lot that he can sell. And so if it's not Gus, Whoever else it is, at least we have a chance for a higher ceiling. I don't think we have that anymore, Gus. And I think that that's going to show in recruiting more than it has. Gus has had good classes, but as I mentioned earlier, I think those number nine, number 12 classes are going to start to dip to 18, 19, 20. We may not get into 25, but if you're in that 18, 19, 20, I mean, look at what's going on with Mullen at Florida. Look at what Jimbo's doing this year, and you know he's going to parlay. I don't think Jimbo's amazing, and I do think we got a great chance next week. But the difference is, is he's going to continue to recruit great at A&M. So that's another team we got to contend with. Florida's going to be back up there. Georgia's already there. Bama's there. Yep. Uh, we, we're missing our window, and we're actually going to fall further behind, in my opinion. So that's why it's not going to happen this year, but we're treading water. And, and to me, I feel like we're just going to start to sink here if something doesn't change uh, coaching-wise. That's just my thought. I mean, their recruiting push right now has not been great so far. That's for sure. And then, uh, as as you mentioned, tough loss to Georgia, tough loss to Alabama. Did beat LSU this year, but LSU's bad. So, when it comes to these big well, wins against the, the – I mean, look, you would agree. It all comes down to Alabama, LSU, and Georgia. I mean, that's the way he gets judged, right? That's the way an Auburn coach gets judged. Am I right? Right, right. And, and, and Gus is the difference. So, not like, doing. for example, we all watched – we watched the – you know, we had the drain yesterday. We watched Gonzaga beat the brakes off our ball club, you know, Pearl's young team. Here's the difference. Bruce Pearl has already gone to a Final Four. He's won an SEC championship. He's won an SEC tournament championship. He's beaten Kentucky almost – it's almost like a one-for-one one in the last four or five years, if I'm not mistaken, against UK. And here's the other difference. We got a top-four player already signed. We got Trey Alexander, top-75 players, signed. We've got a boatload of really talented kids, and like you mentioned yesterday – they're all improving. They're all getting better. Yeah. There isn't that, you know, the basketball equivalent of the left tackle issue or, you know, the the not getting guys that fit your scheme. You never under, you never hear that about Bruce. Um, so that's the difference. The difference is we know what we've got as a program with Bruce. We see what's coming down the pipe. Um, and we also know that a bludgeoning by Gonzaga is a way, way different deal than it is with – us and for the upteenth loss we have not won in tuscaloosa baton rouge or athens under gals Gus malzahn not one time and 90 percent of those are not even competitive they're done after the first quarter that cannot happen no, it can't. ever 
and it, and the kids are not dumb. They see this, and we know that our opponents and our rival coaches are bringing that up every chance they get in these living rooms. So you're not you're going to continue to finish second and third for the Marius Nims and these these difference makers. Anyone that thinks and look, I'm I'm, I'm always said we we got good players, but you got to have those tank big bees on the roster. Everybody sees the difference between tank and Shiver. Shiver's a good running back. Tank is a difference maker when he's healthy. You got to have those guys, and you got to have them on the offensive line, and you got to have them on the defensive line. And where we are right now, and where we're going to be, the, the, we, we already know the ending to the story. We know where we're at with Gus. There's no magical change in a year, two years. We're year eight. It's the same deal. We've never won in these places. And even though we probably may give him a game next year, we know the deal. So again, it ain't going to happen this year, but. Something has to happen if we truly want to compete. Otherwise, we are what we are. We're going to win eight games, seven, you know, seven, eight games, maybe nine, and then every three, four years, maybe you make a run at ten or eleven. But you know, I don't want that. I want what I had growing up in the '80s. I want a Pat Dye program. I want to win ten games a year. I want to compete for the the best kids. And I don't want to watch my team get their brains beat in every single time they go on the road against a rival. Can't happen. These are all fair points, Auburn alumni, and you always keep it uh, you keep it straight with everybody. And the, these resets are appreciated, brother. You do it in basketball, you do it in football. It's it's that's who you are, man. It's appreciated, brother. Well, I think we got. A, I still think we got a good shot. I mean, like I said, the Gus special is next week. I, I fully expect our kids. One thing I will say, they never quit under Gus. We won't quit. We won't fold the ten next week. We'll probably bring it. I expect us to play well against AM because the other thing is, is, I'm sorry, I don't know they're five and one and they're number five in the playoffs. A and M ain't Bama, and they're not even close to that. Right. So we can beat beat them, but that's not what I want. Like my highlight shouldn't be beating A you know, and M. I want to beat Alabama. I want to compete for championships. So that's what I want for Auburn. Um, but you know, anyway, uh, I'll let somebody else get on. I've rambled on, but appreciate these three days of uh, brain drain goodness, man. And keep rolling and screw the haters. And we uh, at least we got some Bruce Ball, and we'll watch more of that. And hey, maybe we'll we'll, we'll be celebrating a win next week too. Who knows? All right, brother. Appreciate you, Auburn alumni. You're the best. All right, man. See you, man. He keeps it real. I love his. Uh, I love his calls, man. Is this Jay Lee? Hey, man. Hey, man. What time? What's going on, Big Daddy? Oh, you know, just watching football, eating some steak. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, the people here they have not been very happy with this shit, dude. Why? Well, they're kind of pissed about losing by 29. They don't understand why Mark Anthony doesn't play more when he actually played really well today. They want to know why Auburn doesn't have a running quarterback when they, they could be playing somebody like Malik or DD or somebody like that all this time, and they've got a pocket quarterback, et cetera, et cetera. He doesn't t- know what a pocket is. What, what do you think about all this? It's First and foremost, I am neutral in my feelings for the game because it went almost – exactly as I figured it to. I had it 45 to 20. Um, if Seth Williams catches that ball, it's 42 to 20. So, you know, I'm uh, very pleased with my prognostication. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I guess I could understand. Uh, it, it's not so much about Alabama uh, being so much better than Auburn. It was Auburn, the things Auburn didn't do very well or that they have done the same things today that we've seen them do all year long. First and foremost, Bo Nix. I understand that his offensive line is below average today. It was below average today. Um, but when he did have pockets, he retreated backwards. He threw off his back foot, even though there was no one around him. And it's frustrating to, to watch. You would think the, it, that the, those type of things would have been corrected by game nine. Is that what it is? Uh, I don't game know. Nine. Does that sound right? I think What's it was eight. Record? Five and Five and three now. Five and three, five now, and three yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. So by, by by the iron ball, you'd expect the quarterback to know. Of course, he's the lifetime quarterback with a father for a coach. You'd expect him to be able to know how to step into a pass. Um, but you know, he uh, so that that was just some of the things frustrating. Mark Anthony Richards uh, looked good in the fourth quarter, but you know, you'd expect any running back to come in off the bench and uh, and look good in the fourth quarter. Most people do. I mean, you're going up against Alabama's threes and fours. That's all I was trying to say. But, but you, you, yeah, you, uh, yeah. So I'm not the whole Mark Anthony Richards thing. That's that's the moot point to me. Um, th- there's 
I've, what I've seen from Tank and what I've even from Shivers, um, that's that's certainly not the running back is not a position of concern of who's playing. I don't, I don't see Mark Anthony Richards demanding more touches after today. But, what do you think is the biggest uh, concern for the team? Good lord, at the safeties and the linebackers. Not good today. Smoke was really bad. I mean, joke Saturday. Am I right? Yeah. Hey now. <laughs> yeah, I've been holding on to that one since the first quarter. Joke Saturday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, bad. He was bad. So, I mean, Sherwood was average today. He he didn't play like you know you expect him to. And the linebackers are non-existent. I didn't. I, I can't honestly. I remember Papo making a play. Maybe well, I, I don't know the lines for them, but you know it wasn't like, oh damn, that's a good play by you know Owen or the Kobe or anybody like that. I thought um, the corners played decent, had some nice plays. Uh, Kobe Wooden played well. Yeah, Big Cat played fairly well, but uh, you know we always talk about the front seven, but the back four. Or the back six, they were uh, they were exposed badly today, and we figured it was. I mean, Alabama's got the best receivers in the nation. They got a uh, uh, a competent quarterback, so I just you know uh, Alabama's got superior coaching. They've got superior talent, and Auburn's average on all accounts, and that's what you get: forty-two to thirteen. Do you think they can put together a, a recruiting class in the end that's going to be on par with what they've been doing? Because right now they're they're way off the pace. On par would be the ceiling right now, right? In my opinion, that's the ceiling for Auburn is to get to where they you know top twelve, top fifteen. Uh, I don't I don't know that they can break the top ten. I don't think the guys that they're going to be able to get are going to be immediate impact players at positions of need. It's not like they're going to go out and add two five-star offensive tackles. They're going to be, you know, chasing the, you know, linebackers and uh, guys that obviously they need, but uh, the biggest, obviously the biggest position they need right now is guys that can come in and start it on the offensive line. Brendan Coffey, again, looked like, you know, Luke Deal had changed jerseys. Uh, so, you know, he's he's built like a tight end, in my opinion, a blocking tight end. Yeah. He was okay, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't terrible. Yeah, he's okay. I mean, honestly, there were times where Bo Nix had time to throw. Not a lot of time to throw. But he he, he, he created in his mind that there was pressure. He's, he's, he's back pedaling, pack pedaling, or he's leaving the pocket. He's throwing off his back foot. He's throwing sidearm. He's jumping to throw. Good God, if Gary Danielson said, He's having to jump to throw, and there's nobody freaking around him <laughs> one more time. Uh, but could be a problem. Yeah. This, this this is uh, what most people should have expected. I, I, I'm surprised that there was people surprised by the performance today. Like yeah, they haven't been watching the same team. I think they knew it was coming, but it still hurts to watch it actually happen. You know, to watch you just get run off the field in Tuscaloosa, and just yuck. Yeah. I mean, it's Ooh. Auburn, Alabama. Well, you would think that, that you, Gus loves to say before the games, we work, we work all year on this. You know, we we work a little bit on this all year long. Well, if you worked on this all year thing, long, how do you lose by th- twenty nine points? The one thing he said in the pregame was, if we get to the fourth quarter, we lock our chances. And I thought, God dang, really? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it was. Uh, and and I will say this: in year eight of a coach. What would Auburn lose to Georgia? Twenty, which should have been forty-two to thirteen. Yeah, or do you tw- remember uh, what you got the screen pulled up? Jay? Yeah, twenty-seven six. Score? You talking about Georgia was twenty-seven six. <clears throat> so twenty-seven and forty-two, sixty-nine, sixty-nine to uh, nineteen. Yeah, and in year eight, you uh, you can't do that to your two biggest rivals. You can't you can't just be run off the field. By both of those teams. Uh, they plus 37 against LSU, though, I'll have you know. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. A lot of good that did them. Yeah. <laughs> They're 5-2, buddy. 5-3 and three now. 
So they got A&M coming up next week, Jay Lee. Yeah, that could. That, I think it would be a better game. It should be. It's at home. Um, good Lord no, uh, knows that Bo Nix needs to get his butt home because uh, I'm not very good on the road. I don't no. know why. He's had some issues on the road. 20,000 people there today. He played in front of more than that at Pinson Valley. Dang. So, yeah, I, I understand the frustrations, obviously, but to me the frustration should come from the bigger picture, not from today's game. And the bigger picture being it's year eight and, uh, and Auburn's losing by a combined score of 69. Is it 69? 69 to 19. 69 to 19. To, uh, and it could have been – and it should have been a lot worse. Georgia could have <clears throat> Georgia could have scored 50 points. You know, it, it should have been yeah. a lot worse than that. So, big picture, I can understand the frustration. Absolutely – justified um and and that's that's where this that's where all, I'm, I'm sure that's where a lot of the anger is coming from it's not yeah. oh my god here we are five and oh and we just lost to alabama uh, 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 an equally matched team the frustration is how uneven the ma- uh, the talent is between alabama georgia and auburn yeah i mean auburn's not even close to those two guys no and, and i've said this all year long until auburn is prepared to recruit with Alabama and Georgia, this is what you can expect, and, and especially along the offensive of and defensive line. And, and I'm not, I don't know what that entails, but I think everybody else knows. Until Auburn is ready to compete in recruiting the defensive and offensive line with Alabama and Georgia, this is what you can expect for years to come. Sure, Auburn might find a way to win every once in a while, but consistently, Georgia and Alabama, the talent difference will be beatdowns. Mm. Well, if the next recruiting class is any indication, Jay Lee, it's not not getting any better. It's sure not. It's sure not. Auburn's lost Jamari and Gooch. Tennessee, they've lost now Caleb Johnson to uh, Notre Dame. They got the kid Eric Wilson from Harvard, which I think will be great. I think he'll be a plug-and-play guy next year. I think he will be an instant upgrade just from the film I've seen. Now, he he may get here and, and, and watch out, but just from what we know and what we've seen of him, I think he will be an instant upgrade for Auburn. Uh, but you've got to get somebody on the edges, two of them, that can uh, that can form a pocket, hold a pocket, give give Bo more than you know a, a half second to two seconds to throw, make up a mind, make some more reads, and uh, we just don't see that yet. We talked about it on the rundown how Auburn will go hard in the transfer por- transfer portal, especially if the one year uh, the one time transfer rule gets uh, oh yeah passed. That's interesting. Plus, so, I mean, there's still is there. There's still some hope for uh, for next year as far as – it's not like, oh, my God, we don't have anybody recruiting, committed, no office tackles committed. You know, there's nobody left. I mean, there's going to be a mass exodus from schools if this one-time transfer rule passes, and Auburn would be sitting beautifully at the top of a lot of these guys' wish list for immediate playing time to p- come play in the SEC West and have, a, have two spots to compete for, left and right tackle them. So there are there are there is some hope. I mean, Auburn's got great uh, talent around, you know, skill set. I mean, skill people, but they just got to get some big uglies. ASAP. ASAP. Yes, sir. All right, Jay Lee, you've done you've done the, you've done good work again. Of course, we always need your resets on uh, what they need and where they're headed. And I don't know if the picture's really yeah. pretty right now, but we appreciate you being real with us. Hey, and let's let's all don't lose the fact of hey, I'm just glad they played today. <laughs> just at least they tried, right? <laughs> hey, everybody had fun. Everybody tried real hard. All right, I'll see you on Tuesday, sir. Peace out, big dog. See, you, bro. Hello. Is this Hootie? I know what you. Your Snapple. What's going on, Kevin? What's going on, Doc? How you been, bro? How are we doing today? Uh, better days, Doc. Uh, that was kind of a. You know, I, I hadn't talked to you in a while, Captain Tate, and uh, you sound a little. Uh, is the word? Well, you know, you're kind of an English guy here. Is the word melancholy kind of how you sound? Beleaguered. We'll go with beleaguered. Is how we're feeling, buddy. <laughs> hey, I'll go beleaguered. That's fine. Uh, what's going on, brother? Well, we're trying to t- we're trying to talk this out, man. And as Jay Lee was doing some computations earlier, Doc, uh, we determined that uh-huh. Auburn has lost to Georgia and Alabama by a combined score of sixty-nine to nineteen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ter- yeah. It is. Uh, 
I'm going to tell you what, you know, tough weekend for all to be an Auburn athlete, uh, just to be uncompetitive in a basketball and a football game, that doesn't happen to us much. And, uh, but, you know, talking about the football game tonight, I was very disappointed. We were uncompetitive. Um, defensively, I, th- I said this all week on the bunker, you know, Alabama averages 49 a game. They're, they're, they're going to score that against everybody. Holding them to 42, now that sounds weird. But, you know, that, that that was okay. You know, it's just our offense, again, we're going on two years now. We're, you know, we just we just struggle offensively. And I, I don't get it, but uh, it is what it is. It was a tough one tonight. Yeah, definitely. And, and it just seemed like at times Auburn wasn't even competitive. I mean, the first quarter was tight, but all of a sudden Alabama gets up kind of big at halftime, scores on their second possession in the third quarter, and it's like off to the races, brother. And, I mean, the, the the prevailing opinion on this chat here is it, it shouldn't be like this. I mean, I know Saban's really good and everything, but why is Auburn this far behind skill-wise? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, again, that's a great question. We should compete. I, I think with a little different offensive system, we probably compete a little better. Um, again, you look at the SEC, to me, there's a lot of teams that score – a lot of teams don't. You know, we don't really score a lot. Kentucky doesn't score a lot. Uh, and I don't know why that is. But, uh, obviously, Alabama had better players. Um, we probably, you know, the answer to your question is we probably need to recruit better players. Uh, that's that's a lot easier said than done, though. You know, it's uh, – uh, but, you know, it's your eight and Malzahn's deal. And uh, if it's not figured out now, then uh, – you know, he'll either probably have to figure it out next year or we'll probably have to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you see any way out here? I mean, do you think Gus gets Auburn out of this? Yeah, I think I, I think Gus will be back next year. I mean, I think if, if any other program is 5-3 and three right now, I don't think they're thinking about firing their coach. No. Uh, but at the same time, you hate to be uncompetitive against Tuscaloosa, but – but then again, if you look, if you take a step back and you and you pretend like you're from North Dakota and you don't know these programs very well, uh, everybody gets beat bad by Tuscaloosa. Now that, that doesn't make it okay, and I and, and it was disappointing tonight. We had our opportunities, but you know it, it's just I, I think Gus will coach next year. I think he'll get out of this year. Well, what I mean is, do you think he's going to lead Auburn to that next step where they challenge Alabama, no, where they no, challenge no, no, Georgia? I, no. I don't, I don't think so because I don't think he offensively sees it. Um, I, I truly believe, again, if you brought somebody in to look at our program, they would say the number one issue is our offense. Not that our defense is just balls to the wall, but, I mean, they're, they're, they're where they need to be. They're probably a top five to eight defense in SEC or maybe even better than that. But our offense just – I mean, last year it was bad. This year it's bad. Um, they went and hired a new offensive coordinator. It, it just – it's kind of like Power Man says. I mean, it's it's like rocket science for us offensively. Looking at other teams, it's like it's it's like coloring books for them. It's so easy. Yeah. So I don't see him getting us. I don't see him changing his theories and ways to get us better offensively. Let's put it that way. And same for for uh, for Chad, right? I mean, because I've kind of thought yeah. all year that Chad was the guy running the show, but if that's true, he's not really coming along either. You know, well, and Chad, maybe I have, like I said, I don't know the dichotomy, what goes on in there in the locker room, but uh, it, it's just obvious. Um, you know, we scored 13 points. Uh, you know, we scored 20, what, 30 last week against Tennessee. We just, we just don't score a lot of points. We, we, you know, we beat LSU last year if, if we score 27 points. And a lot of teams, I think, were scoring that against them last year. Um, we just have trouble scoring, and I don't see Gus or Chad changing that. Yeah. What are your thoughts about tailback? There's a lot of questions about why is Sean continue to start? I know you like Shivy Poo, but it sure seems yeah, like Tank I, you know and what? I'm, I'm such a I'm a terrible guy to ask that I love Shivy Poo. Uh and a, a big Auburn fan called me tonight. I, here's the deal. I, I think we have three or four good running backs. I think Tank is cl- clearly number one. Um after that, of course, you know, Mar is going to be the big name because the last 10 minutes of the game, um, you know, he has – he has, and, I, and I'm so glad for him because you, you always cheer for that guy that works hard and gets in there. He's the fourth guy. So, I, I don't know where that stands, but I don't think Sean Shivers hurts us. Uh, some people may think he hurts us. I think he helps us in ways. But I, I think there's a drop-off from Tank, and I, 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 get, I think they're all about the same is my opinion on that. Word, okay. And uh, defense – 
Uh, they gave up a lot of points tonight, but you generally have been kind of, you know, you, you've defended Kevin well, Steele. Kevin Steele, they scored. They average 49. They score 40 against everybody they play. So it's that's a lot of points for us, for Auburn to look at and say, man, we gave up 42. But, you know, if we could have scored 32 in this game, you know, they might not have scored – you know, that many points. We, we might have been on the field a little longer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can I ask you about one thing, though, Coach Steady, you there? Yeah, hell yeah, bring it. Has anybody talked about the thread about the brain drain issues with the bunker? Has that come up yet tonight? Uh, we've talked about it a little bit, not on the phone, but on the chat. But I feel like, you know, all of us here are surprised to see that criticism, Doc. I, I was. I just want to say, as because you know me pretty well, I'm kind of an organized guy. I've got a lot of problems, uh, but I don't listen to the brain drain a lot because I'm not really technically sound. I mean, you know, there's people that know how to bump it into their radio, all this kind of stuff. I'm driving down the road, so I'm on my phone right now. But the brain drain is just, and it's an addition to the bunker. I mean, it is a great addition for if people don't want to listen. That that is perfectly fine. I'm sure a lot of people don't listen, but I was shocked that the comments from the people uh, kind of disparaging the brain drain. I, I, know. I mean, you had to have been taken aback by that, weren't you? I was surprised, but there's also people on there that just, they're mad about everything. So I just kind of took it in stride. Well, but. You know what? I tell you what, we, we are a whiny bunch. The, the fa- I love family. I love it to death. But we are, we whine about everything. But I was shocked at that. Uh, I just, like, I can think of 10,000 problems in the world and I don't think I would ever say, man, I think the brain drain is taken away from my bunker experience. <laughs> and obviously there's people that think that way. Yes, there are. There definitely are people who think that way. And I, I got to try to figure out of those uh, criticisms, some of them are legit and some of them aren't. I got to try to figure out which ones are, which ones aren't, and how to fix it, you know, how to, how to get it better. I don't know. Yeah, and, and I think you'll be good at that, Tate. I mean, just whatever they don't like, uh, maybe you can meet with them and maybe you can have a separate group. You know, the LEA, we meet twice a year. And, uh, you know, we go over we go over some problems. We go over things we need to improve. Maybe you need to take the guys that have a problem with the brain drain and just meet with them and uh, just kind of keep them happy, if you know what I mean. I think those guys want to kick me in the nuts and make my balls come out my nose. So I don't know <laughs> if I'd want to meet with them personally. <laughs> well, I wouldn't meet. You don't have to meet them in person. Maybe just go, like, virtual. Oh, you know, okay. Maybe like a Zoom meet. Just something so you're <laughs> you're far enough away where nobody gets physically hurt. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, maybe that is a good idea. I'd like for you to moderate it, though, Doc. You, you and Hootie could do that and calm them down a little yeah, bit. I, I would absolutely love to. In fact, I, Hootie would ask me over at his house tonight, but I bet they I, that had to be 250 people over their house tonight. I didn't make it over there tonight. But uh, I, all I want you to know is, is I'm a supporter of the drain. Um, I think, you know, when Ruxy Poo, I just call him the official starter of the drain. Um, well, you know, I just thought when that thing went live, it was a good thing, and I don't think it takes away from the bunker by any experience. Thank you, sir. Uh, hey, on my Spotify playlist the other day, I had a song by Confederate Railroad come on called She Took It yeah. Like a Man, and uh, I know yeah. you love Confederate Railroad like I do, so I, I just want to say what up to you on that. Well, and I really appreciate it. I actually get a lot of texts or DMs from guys who are listening to music on the radio. Hey, my buddy A.U. McBain was listening to a little – uh, Ronnie Millsap the other day, and uh, Ronnie, uh, and he just texted me on the, you know, on the bunker and said, "Hey, man, I'm listening to Ronnie, and uh, I love that stuff. I mean, it, it 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 makes the world go around for Doc Dumpster. Oh, that's good, Doc. It's it's. Now, it's can we go over uh, before we leave? Can we go over basketball real quick? Yes, please. Any kind of new. Any kind of new. I was very disappointed in our game against Gonzaga. Yes. Um, I was uh, I was I wasn't necessarily expecting us to win, but I expected us to be better than that. What well, What was your kind of thoughts on that one? Uh, similar to this, in the sense that I had a feeling that's what was going to happen. But um, I mean, Pearl's got an exceptionally young team. We know that yeah. uh, this football team's not exceptionally young, so it's a little bit different there. But we know what the story is on basketball. You do too. I mean, this year is going to be Auburn's going to take some hits this year. And then yeah, I, that's I, true. I think they're going to grow, and the next year you add a couple really, really awesome recruits or signees, and then boom, you're, you're going. You're good to go. Yeah, and listen, I think Bruce is a really good coach. I think he this team's going to get better. I just – here's my issue. I think that uh, Jay Will is the best player, but I don't know – you know him a lot better than I know him. Uh, is he just – does he have a confidence issue? Does he not want to be the main guy, or do you know? 
I just think he gets a little beleaguered the way that Bryce did early in his career, and then it kind of makes him right. be a little more timid. So, okay, because, a, I mean, he's the guy that I think is the best player on the team when he wants to be, and we got to feed the ball through him, and he just was not non-existent the other day. No, against Gonzaga, it was terrible. He had picked up some early fouls, silly fouls. He's got to be better than that, and uh, you got to hope that we don't see a lot from that, a lot of that from him yep. moving forward, that, like, he learns how to kind of calm down defensively if he's got a foul or two against him early. Yeah, he didn't handle that well yeah. at all, Doc. Not at all. Okay, uh, but, you know, my buddy Flanny's getting better. I love watching Flanny. Me too. Um, little word about my buddy Eric Cambridge. Um, you know, I thought he would take the next step, and, boy, he just hadn't taken that next step. No, that shot ain't getting any prettier, Doc. Hey, hey, hey. Well, it's not just a shot. It's he can't dribble. So, uh, if he does, you know, if you don't hit him on a set shot, I mean, like he's playing for the 1948 Houston Musketeers, then he can't freaking score. And uh, I thought he'd be a good enough athlete to freaking dribble and dunk, but I don't know that he is. No, not yet. Uh, but I think maybe that's just a confidence issue for him. Maybe he has that dribbling ability, he just hadn't shown it yet. I don't know. Well, now, good point. Like I said, I mean, I'm not down on him. I just thought we'd be uh, do a little better. Uh, lastly, Coach, Rux says Ruxy Poo called in tonight. Hell yeah, he has. It wouldn't be a brain drain now, without how him. Was, now, how was Ruxy Poo's demeanor? How, how was that? He he sounded good. He sounded a lot like the old Ruxy that we know and love, so I'm fired up about that. He did. <laughs> uh, he stood up for uh, CJ3131, a.k.a. Papa Bear, because I've been, very, oh, I've been really? down on Papa what Bear. Happened with, what happened with Papa Bear tonight? Nothing tonight, but I hung up on him like three weeks ago because I feel like he's, an, he's actually a dog who is masquerading <laughs> as an Auburn fan. And Ruxy Poo says that's not true. I have a feeling that's what you would say as well, right? Yeah, yeah. We we love Pop. Did you hear about Papa Bear in the Dodge dealership the other night? <laughs> no, lay it on me. Papa Bear is, you know, he, he's he's just consumed with freaking very high end trucks, expensive jacked up trucks. He's taking some innocent late night ride to some Dodge dealership, and he freaking gets pulled over by two cop cars uh, because he's in their lot when it's closed. And uh, so he's he's actually sending us some video. It's it's Papa Bear, and I mean I'm not telling. There's like three cop cars, and it's just our innocent LEA president Papa Bear just talking to the cops. And after about five minutes. They were all freaking best friends. Oh, I mean, my God. It was almost like they were giving him money before they let him go. That's a, that's insane. He has such an ability to kind of win people over, you know? Oh, it's 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 insane. You can see how he's such a successful attorney. I mean, for God's sakes. Uh, him and probably Smitty. I mean, I don't I don't know the bunker that well, but I'd be, you'd be hard-pressed to find two more successful people than him and old Smitty. How about that? I think he's upset with me for hanging up on him, though. I think he's getting over that. That was a very sensitive issue. Uh, but I tell you, I think Papa Bear is slowly getting over that. Glad to see Ruxy, uh, you know, glad to see Ruxy kind of uh, take care of him. Uh, Ruxy's having some female issues. Did those come up at all? No, not really. I asked if he had been slaying, and he just said that he had posted on the bunker about that. So I was going to look that up later. Okay. he's got he, He's got several women. You know, he's young enough and into these kind of – Dating apps and stuff like sure. that, where you just punch your finger, and next thing you know, a piece of ass shows up. And uh, dude, he's got ass everywhere. Oh, no I know, freaking everywhere. Damn, I wish I was young again, man. Oh, dude, he's living life. Now, now speaking of young and living life, make sure you give old D Lucky a call tonight. A, ta- a text of D Lucky earlier. You know, he's one of my favorites. Let's make sure we get him on the drain tonight. He's uh, always got good stuff. Absolutely, we love D Lucky. He's Hall of Famer, no doubt. Yeah, and I will say, he is Hall of Famer. Did Power Man get on yet? No, not yet, but he's in the chat, I believe, because he was uh, looking for a self-shout uh, after you gave him a shout, so that's good. Well, Power Man, you know, he's a guy that if he hasn't called yet, people kind of want to call in because he'll he'll kind of regroup this whole football thing and have a lot of common sense about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, real, real quick before I leave, I don't want to knock Bo Nix that bad. I, I never have thought Bo Nix was incredible. But I thought Bo Nix was okay tonight. He's just running for his life too much. Um, he, he he made a play out of an end zone where he ran 15, 20 yards. That there's only a couple people in college football that can make that play. Now, it was supposed to be a pass, but our guy wouldn't turn his head around. But, you know, Nix, I, I will take up for Nix, and he's running around a lot with guy with huge son of a bitch chases him all over the place. I know. He's got a lot of pressure on him. The offensive line's not good. We've talked about that earlier in the show. they got to get some tackles, man. And Jay Lee says Auburn's got to do what it takes to start winning some recruiting battles for tackles. So 
Until that happens, yeah. man, I think Bo's going to be feeling the pressure. And then whoever follows Bo, you know? Yeah, I would agree. Like I said, I, well, I'm going to tell you what, uh, Coach Stanton, it's always good to talk to you. And uh, like I said, let me know if I need to moderate any kind of brain drain versus non-brain drain people. Uh, I appreciate you a ton, and have a great night. See you, Doc. Hey, man. Hey, Caller, welcome to the show. How you doing? I'm good, brother. How you doing, JG? Hey, we've had some folks clamoring for you, bro. Well, I appreciate that. I told Doc he had to call in for sure, and he said he'd uh, give me a shot and make sure I made it in. So, yeah, did he text you Always earlier for real? Does he text you sometimes? He did. He did. Yeah, yeah. Doc, Doc and I text in, uh, in real life. And he says, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, Basically that. <laughs> Just check in, make sure, you know, our, our worlds are going all right, and, you know. Everybody, everybody's good. Just you know, nice, friendly, friendly, uh, friendly text exchange. Yeah, the people. I think a lot of folks don't realize that a lot of bunkerites, you know, communicate privately, and and there's a lot of love. It really is kind of a family in the background. You know, a lot of people don't realize that. Absolutely. Doc had a couple of things that he uh, he wanted a little bit of a different perspective on that he thought I could offer from my life experiences. So he reached out to uh, to exchange. It was, it was like I said, it was good. It's good stuff. Uh, not as good uh, today on the football field, though, D-Lucky. This is kind of a stinker. I no. No. I mean, uh, not, not a lot of surprise. Still not enjoyable to, to, you know, get run through like that. Um, but I think the thing that I've kind of got from all of it and what everyone's saying is uh, we don't have a program. We've had some good teams here and there with Gus, but Gus has not built the program. He might be a good coach all in, you know, in a different set of circumstances, he might be a good coach. He is not a program builder in any stretch of the, you know, or definition of the, of the term. Um, when you look at Georgia, LSU, and kind of them having not great years, um, you can kind of pinpoint a couple of things with them, and you kind of get the feeling that they'll have it addressed next year. Now, Georgia, the quarterback thing, you know, he's kind of screwed that up a couple of times, but still – there's like one or two things that they need to get fixed and they'll be competitive for a national spot. And for us, it's not one or two things. Jeffrey Lee talked about the, you know, defensive line, but that's not the end of it. Even if we had a great defensive line tonight, our linebackers are not where we need them to be. The safety play, not where we needed to be. We don't have anybody besides tank that we would consider an elite running back. we got some good running backs, but that's not there. Bo is an elite. I mean, Seth has, you know, skill set that's really good, but, you know, he takes plays off. So he's not, you know, a, a, an absolute showstopper either. So all of that is just part of the program. It's just the way it's been built from the beginning. And until we, we identify that we want to have a different program and stop just focusing on, okay, what does this team need, we're going to get similar results. We'll have a good team here or there for as long as Gus is there, and then we'll fall flat on our face and have to try to get back. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Do you see any way that Gus kind of gets out of this long term where he can turn this around and maybe make the next step up and, and challenge Georgia and Alabama? I mean, is there any way? No, because I thought that Chad was going to be the piece on offense to get him there to help with some of the design, and I haven't seen as much creativity out of that coupling as I would have liked to have had, and we just seem to kind of do a lot of the same stuff. I mean, it was just – it, it, one of the plays was where uh, Stove had a um, had a pass thrown out to him in the Alabama safety, just immediately read the play and said, this ball is going right here to this guy. And the guy took off. He didn't, he didn't hesitate. There was no nothing that he thought, oh, this might be something else. Let me wait a second. And blew the play up. Just, you know, and it's, it's just part of what we've had. We, we, there's nothing that they have to look at on film and go, mm, let me think about this for a second before I make a move. We used to have that ability where we would call some hesitation and they'd have to think, and then you'd get a better blocking angle and those kinds of things. But that doesn't exist now. Just, mm. just doesn't. None, none of what we do puts any kind of extra stress or pressure on the other team. And they're just like, all right, who are the playmakers on the field? All right, Flash is out here, Seth's out here. Those are the only possibilities. How are we going to defend those two? <laughs> and that's it. It's done. I'm with you. I thought Chad was going to be so, better. I thought Chad was going to bring like that wrinkle that Gus lacked, and and we just haven't seen that yet. You know, I mean, he's been okay at times, but today was a setback. I thought it is, and like I said, it goes back to the program. When you see um, Capers and uh, good gracious, what's other other wide receiver freshman Kobe? Um, Kobe. When when you see them get the ball in their hands and actually do something with it, 
but they're only on the field for five or eight plays. Mm -hmm. Or when Capers out there, he's just blocking the whole time he's out there. And yet Shed Jackson is out there for 30 plays, 40 plays, and all he does is block and then catches, you know, one ball. There's just, we just don't, we don't have the approach that other schools have when it comes to utilizing talent. It's just the, the way the program approaches it is just, it's just wrong. And, and, it, and it shows in the results because we've got people that could actually make plays who don't get on the field. Our best tailback doesn't start. And that makes sense to nobody. We got a four string tailback that looked decent. And we got a scat back who's playing our starting tailback spot as opposed to just being an offensive weapon who gets eight touches a game from a, you know, split out set or something where he's got a mismatch with somebody. But we got him running through defense, five-star defensive lineman who can tackle him in one arm while they're being blocked. Yeah, DX Triple H was asking earlier, is like, why does Sean keep starting and why does he get so many touches? And that's a great – I don't know the answer to that, D-Lucky. I'm going to have to ask and find out about that. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But it's like I said, it's a program mentality. I guess Sean's been here long enough. And, and, and like normally you can kind of pick pick something out, like he's really good on pass protection or something like that. But damn it, if Bo didn't move him to the right side of the of the play formation four times tonight, so it obviously hit him being you know a stalwart in the the, the film room that's got him out there. So I don't get it. Me neither. Just don't get it. So what else we got? Gonna, uh, not not a lot's going to change. Next week will be you know a Gus light week. We'll we'll have some plays drawn up. We'll you know we'll beat uh we'll beat Jimbo by two touchdowns. And Gus will talk about how great a season it is, and then we'll beat the Pirate by another three touchdowns. And regular fans will go off into the season thinking we did a great job. Man, I don't know. I don't. Texas A&M is going to be tough. Man. I mean, they're pretty good, man. They're having a pretty good year. But the, I get it. But that's Gus. Get our head head pounded in by Alabama, and then next week we'll he will find a way, and you'll go. Well, where the hell were these plays last week? <laughs> that's exactly what he will do. But it's just it's part of the way it works. And, and people in the chat were talking about, we don't want to compare ourselves to Alabama, blah, 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 blah. Take the name off the jersey. You just look at the standard that they've set for how they refill talent and how they are competitive year after year after year. It doesn't matter what the name is on the jersey. Then you add in the fact that they are in our division. That's, that's the mark. We've got to at least be that good. Now, we can try to get better than that as a program. But that is absolutely where we are aiming for for now. Once we get to that point and we're as good as they are, if we decide that there's a point past that that we feel we need to go to, then okay. But in order for us to get where we want to be, that world goes through Tuscaloosa. Simple as that. Hmm. Wise words spoken, D-Lucky, again. What else you got? Man, everybody have a drink tonight. Make the best <laughs> out of it. We'll, we'll just keep drinking. <laughs> I haven't even cracked anything open yet. I'm just gonna go survey, see what see what speaks to me. All right, D. Lucky, it's uh, it's appreciate you giving us some time, brother. Everybody always clamors for you uh, to call in, and I know why because you're, you're a great caller, good reasonable caller. Man, I appreciate the love. Y'all stay safe. Enjoy the rest of this weekend. All Peace. Right. See you, bro. Is this Mister B. Matt? It is. It is. I got a, a through a, a few thrashings, but yeah, I'm still here. How did uh, Gus do post game? Did he say we're a young team? Was just tough loss. We got to man up and get over. It? He did not say we were a young team. That did not occur during his. I think it was about a just about a six and a half minute press conference. Very short. Why was it so short? And there were no questions. Actually, I think what happened is nobody had asked a question, and so it was like, okay, no more questions. We'll move on to the players, and that was it. Nobody got a chance to ask more. I, I think that was more of it. I think there are more questions to be asked. Yeah. Mm. So, eh, you know, whatever. But Did, we'll talk to him tomorrow, right? So, big, you know. Were there any good whatever. questions asked? I mean, about what happened and why this was such so bad. Um, you know, he he said the the usual thing about um, we got a man up and uh, we got to um, you know, take this like a man and 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 you know, turn the page and get ready for. Uh, Texas A&M next week, you know, those kinds of things. But he wasn't asked, like, any, like, tough questions. Like, um, you know, I was thinking about, um, you know, what's to say about the state of the two programs right now that, you know, you got beat this badly. This is, I think this is the second worst loss of his um, coach head coaching career. Oh, is that true? Um, what I, I can tell. Yeah, you know, the worst one, I think, was 
uh, to Alabama two years ago. I think that was by, by 31 points. And what was this one? This one was by 29 points, is uh-huh. that right? Yeah. 29, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think this is it's tied for the second worst. I think he, he uh, may have lost by 29 at um, when he was at Arkansas State to another team, too. So, um, But we didn't really get into that too much. You know, mostly it was just about the game, why you didn't play well or what went wrong, you know, and it was pretty much the obvious things we all saw. Um, he, he mentioned that he thought the team came out flat in the first quarter. Um, you know, he, he thought that um, – uh, they didn't do a good job of, of making plays when they got, you know, inside the 40. You know, they kept um, going backwards, trying to settle for field goals. He did uh, say on that one third and three, I thought it was 14 nothing then, but maybe it was just 7 nothing. Um, they thought about going for it, you know, after they didn't get the first down, but they just decided to, uh, to kick the field goal instead. instead. Um, and a lot of people were questioning that that call or, or why not be more aggressive. Um what else did he talk about? And he, he mentioned uh, Tank Bixby wasn't close to being 100%. He said that um, yeah. you know, he went out there and played through it. He said Berdier's ham had to leave the game uh, or couldn't come back for the second half and that DJ Williams got banged up. So Auburn's going to be banged up at running back again next week. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think, um, I don't think uh, Tank you know, re, re-aggravated the injury from what I could tell. But I, I doubt he's still back to 100. percent I think those hip injuries used to take three to four weeks to get over. But you know, we'll see. Oof. So they may go into A and M with a Shivers and uh, Mark Anthony as being the A number one tailbacks, right? The, the healthy ones, right? Yeah, yeah, but you know, we saw Tank get the majority of the carries when the game was still sort of on the line. So I think he'll still be a big part of it. You just you can just tell he did he couldn't cut and he wasn't quite as quick as he normally would be. But uh, I thought Mark Anthony Richards ran the ball really well. You know, he had that one run where he almost fumbled it. But other than that, he he um, showed some good quickness. You know, um, broke some tackles, got some good yards after contact. I was impressed with really the first chance to see him get multiple carries in the game against a, a decent team. So I was impressed with that. Um, I thought Auburn's offensive line played poorly again, sort of just like they did at Georgia. You know, yeah. gave up a lot of um, gave up I think three sacks and a bunch of hurries. Um, <laughs> I saw him, I saw a couple of them just get tossed around like a sack of potatoes. I know Keandre Jones did one time. I don't remember which play it was. I just remember him basically getting knocked, uh, knocked backwards. Uh, and that's a that's 320 pounds <laughs> getting knocked backwards. So, um, mm. and then defensively, you know, I thought they, other than the big plays, they did a really good job stop the stuff in the run. You know, and uh, you know, I thought the defensive line held up pretty good. Um, they didn't get destroyed, um, but those those explosive plays just killed them on defense. Man. I mean, just to, just that's not what that's not what I thought was going to happen. I thought Kevin Steele would find a way, but I, I just think Alabama's talent was just too good, and they were, they just weren't prepared for it. Yeah, it was what two long touchdowns plus a pretty long running touchdown. Right, it was thirty five yards, thirty nine yard run. Yep, yeah, yep. And they ended up with um, let me see here, how many was it? It was. Um, I think it was around 14 explosive plays, something like that. Um, 11, 11, six pass plays of 20 more yards and five running plays of 10 more yards. So 11 explosive plays in that game. And um, they averaged eight, uh, over eight yards per play. So that just tells you about how it was going for them. They weren't yeah. in many third long situations. Uh, we've been fussing a bunch on here about, I mean, would you be surprised to see Auburn come out and just absolutely flush Texas A&M next week? I mean, no, I wouldn't, to be honest with you. No, I would not. I, but I've been disrespecting Texas A&M all season. I even picked LSU to beat them, and, and I think they're up like 10 nothing or so uh, right now. Although uh, LSU was driving a minute ago and had a touchdown call back on a penalty. So they're giving them a, sort of a kind of a game. But, no, I just still don't just, uh, I just still don't respect Texas A&M. They may whip Auburn's butt, but I, I'll probably pick Auburn to win. Well, not surprise me to see them bounce back. I just mean that more as like Gus lays an egg or, or they lay an egg at Alabama, but – they actually come back and play really well against a and It just seems like – and you were the one who asked Gus about this, I think, a year ago, and I thought it was a good question about, you know, he had lost at Georgia, and you asked him there in Athens, like, what's the deal, man? You keep losing Georgia, LSU, Alabama, and now in these two games this year against Georgia and Alabama, they've lost 69-19. to I mean, what? Yep. what's what's the deal? That's a reasonable yeah, question, think, right? I think the deal is those guys just recruit, and it's just a big talent difference. Um, and in fact, I can update my stats now. Gus is now eight and seventeen against the big three. 
um, eight and four at home, by the way. So that's um, O and 13 away <laughs> from Jordan Hare, either uh, either um, at their stadiums or in the SEC championship game. Good so. golly, man. Never <laughs> won a game on the road? Never beat one of Auburn's uh, top three opponents o- away from Jordan Hare. So that's just, you know, wow. that, that's something that he needs to be able to do, right? To, to be Hell able yeah. to stay at Auburn, he needs to do that. You know, that's pretty sus. I mean, he, he gets Georgia and Alabama at home next year. This will be a better team next year. And people out there going, there's no way that Auburn could beat Alabama after they just lost by, you know, 29 points. But I mean, they beat him last year, right? They, there was that, this much of a change from last year to this year, and it can happen again the other way. So sure it can. And, and uh, Pat Jordan here makes a big, big difference in a football game. So, so we'll see. But, um, yeah, I, th- I think um, when all things are even, Alabama's talent just really uh, shows out against Auburn right now. It's just too much of a difference at too many positions. That record is an absolute stinker, BMAC. Good golly, man. So, yes, but if you put it in context that this is the best stretch of Alabama football in the history of that program and the history of a very, very good program, probably the best stretch of any school, any college football team in the college football history. Is that going too far? Are people, yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. That may be going a little too far, but I think it's probably close, right? It's got to w- be. I would think. I got to look that up, yeah. though. I don't really yeah. want to, but, I mean, we could. But, I mean, that's what he's going against, right? He's going against uh, an absolute 100-year powerhouse recruiting and playing football and winning championships yeah. right now. So, you know, you, you got to – you. Get, it's our job as reporters and writers to put things in perspective, you know, not to overreact emotionally to every bad or good thing that happens. And that's what I would say. That was not a pretty loss. It was ugly. It's not good to lose to your uh, arch in-state rival like that. It definitely showed the difference in talent. But there's a reason. There's a difference in talent. And um, Auburn's not the only team getting their ass whipped by Alabama on a pretty regular basis. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, you're, we're a young team. We're just going to come together. Got to play hard. We got, we got a big game next week against A&M. We got to win that one. But I'm not wrestled. I, don't, I guess I've just accepted this is Gus right now. This is this year's team, right? Yeah, it's COVID. If it's they COVID. did that to Auburn at Jordan Hare Stadium, I would be on your show ranting for 30 minutes straight and absolutely asking for his his scalp, right? Right. Because that would be a different story. But this is not. This is this is basically what everybody predicted, right? I'm the only one that predicted it to be like 27 to 10, I think. I think everybody else had it in the 30s or 40s. Yeah. So you were Mr. Yeah. Pollyanna, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah. I was trying to. I, I, I just, I just kind of had a feeling because everybody else was picking it to be a, you know, a high scoring game that maybe it would be, you know, the opposite. Just, just, I don't know. Whatever. It was a, it was a dumb take. Just like my pick that for LSU to be Texas A&M was pretty stupid right now. Oh man, it's still time, man. It's still time. <laughs> All right, B Matt, uh, you behave yourself. I guess I'll see you on the Zoom tomorrow, then, sir. Yeah, yeah, and basketball. Um, oh, yeah. One thing I thought was interesting, and I'm going to write about this, but Pearl said that he thinks UCF has a huge advantage over them Monday because they've got two games to scout them, and UCF has not played yet. Uh, so he thinks that's going to be a big, big um, test for them. Um, and I guess that's at UCF. I, I'm, uh, no, it's in Orlando for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's going to be a, a real challenge. And, uh, yeah, there's not going to be like, you know, Iron Bowl, two two basketball games, Iron Bowl, and now another basketball game. So we are rolling uh, with the sports right now. Absolutely. Load it up, man. And then we got yep. Jimbo next weekend, huh? Oh, boy. All right, B-Man. I'm going dis- to disrespect him. All right, see you, man. See you, brother.